you know, there's a funny thing. Um, it's almost as though biology and then its ancillary tack-on phenomenon culture is a kind of conquest of dimensions that has been going on for a very long time and this aids me anyway in understanding the transformation that I think lies ahead for this planet. The earliest forms of life ha had only a tactile sense. That means all they knew was what they were bumping up against and they would move around and what was edible was eaten and what wasn't wasn't. And then over a long time passed, you know, 100 million, 200 million years, and certain specialized cells uh, 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 aggregated, and these cells were light-sensitive cells. They could send an on-off signal uh, based on whether or not photons were falling on them. So eye spots developed. And eye spots are just these sensors which tell you if it's light or dark. And suddenly these creatures could move off after a light source or could retreat from danger into a dark spot. Well, then uh, eventually these eye spots evolved into the kinds of very finely coordinated optical systems that we have and octopi have and so forth. At the same time, motility was developing, the ability to move through space. Well, have you ever noticed that when you look at something and at a place a few feet from where you're sitting and then go there, physically move there, that what you have really done is you have coordinated a, a short trip into the future because you have looked at a spot and you have said, this is how the brain computer works, it has said, I am not in that place. I want to be in that place. I am in this place now. To get from this place now to that place then, I have to move through the following points. And, and when animals began to move, uh, another dimension was added to their repertoire of control. And when they began to coordinate vision, another dimension was added to their repertoire of control. Well, we made then a great and fundamental break in our neurological organization. All animal life, as far as we can tell, is imprisoned between very steep temporal canyons having to do with the present moment. Animals are in the present moment in, in a way that would be very frightening to us, I think. If you could suddenly enter the mind of an animal, the Im immediate thing that you would notice that would really unnerve you was the absence of a past and a future. That just, you know, you talk about be there now, an animal has that down pat. Well, when we, uh, through language, that was the great... Language is a strategy for binding time. Language is a strategy for taking the animal mind locked in the present moment and pushing it back conceivably to the creation of the universe as we do and forward conceivably to the end of the universe. So, so culture is a strategy for intensifying the dimensionality of an animal species. And uh, the, the, uh, when, when you then get into what's called epigenetic coding, not simply being able to recall the past, neurologically and project the future neurologically, but to actually write down the past and calculate the future. Well then, what is happening is mind is spreading out through the dimensions available to it. And this whole cultural
cultural intensification that we call the 20th century, the spinning down and interconnecting of technologies and, uh, and uh, animal ecosystems and philosophical systems, all this knitting together is a, a going hyperdimensional of our species that yet more of the future and more of the past is apparently to be realized. And if you know anything about virtual reality uh, thinking, there time is to be homogenized completely. I mean, you will not be able to tell whether it's next week or last week because there will be uh, it's approximately equally accessible. And uh, somehow the psychedelic experience is related to this bootstrapping process of climbing organizationally from one dimension to another, deeper and deeper into complexity. It's almost as though the psychedelic experience is a viewing of the process from the highest dimension in the plane. One way of putting this that isn't so mathematical is to say what you experience in the psychedelic experience is eternity. All of time, you leave the slowly revolving torus of time just as one would leave the galaxy in a spaceship and you go outside and then you look back and you see all of time. You see the beginning of life, the end of life, the fiery death of this planet, millennia hence, whatever it is. Uh, and, and I think that this is a true vision, that this is what shamans have achieved, this is what we, with all our sophistication, are confounded by. A shaman is someone who has seen the end. A shaman is somebody who has seen it all. They've run the movie, and run the movie, and run the movie, and they've satisfied themselves that they understand the movie. Then they go back to their place in the movie, and they live it with a small smile, because they know the end. They know how things work. They know what life is. And when you have even a piece of that action, you can get a real handle on peace of mind, on true authenticity, because it's in the tumbling, forward, rushing chaos of the lower dimensional slices of time that we lose it that we become confused. Who am I? What do I want? Where am I? Who should I be with? What should I give myself to? Uh, this, is the, this is a voice speaking from chaos. I remember once at a period of turmoil in my life, I, I took mushrooms to try and resolve my personal difficulties. And I, and I said, I'll think of a question. You know, they say you should think of a question. So I said, I'll think of a question. The question was, am I doing the right thing? And it's in the point in the trip, I posed this question to it. And the answer was, what kind of a chicken shit question is that? <laughs> to ask an extraterrestrial intellect. So, so then I got it, you know, that that was a chicken shit question and that I had been completely misunderstanding the nature of the relationship. This wasn't some kind of little glass ball that gives yes or no when you turn it upside down. This is... I don't know, words fail, but nobody to expect psychotherapy for free from anyone.